Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this video, we are going to talk about paroxysm, structure and function. Many students have requested me to talk about paroxysm. We haven't discussed it earlier. So if you want to know the paroxysm, structure and function, and if you want to know the difference between a paroxysm and a lysosome, then this video is just for you. So stay tuned to understand the structure and function of paroxysm. So let me take a color for you and let's begin. So what is paroxysm? The very first thing that we ask ourselves is paroxysm. Basically, when we say nucleus, there is a picture in our mind. When you say mitochondria, there is a picture in our mind. Lysosom, there is some picture. But when you say paroxysm, there is no, no picture in our mind generally. The reason behind it is that there is no discrete structure of the paroxysm. If you look at this picture, this is a schematic drawing. It has a lipid uh, layer and some crystalloid core inside. That is paroxysm basically, nothing more than that. So it's hard to imagine, right? So paroxysm is membrane bound organelle, it has a lipid bilayer bound organelle, 0 0.5 to 1 micrometer in size, small vesicle containing digestive enzyme, that's it, basically it's a vesicle filled with digestive enzyme. So if I say that paroxysm is a vesicle filled with digestive enzyme, you can also ask me, the same thing repeats for the lysosome, right, a vesicle filled with digestive enzymes. So what's the difference? We also call paroxysm as a detoxification center of a cell. It's more abundant in liver and kidneys. Okay, And paroxysms are also called as micro bodies. So if they say that the cells have these micro bodies, that means they are also tagging and talking about paroxysms. Paroxysms are about the size of the lysosome, 0 0.5 to 1.5 micrometer. And like them are bound by a single membrane. Okay. Bilayer means the lipid bilayer, but the membrane is single membrane. For example, mitochondria is surrounded by two uh, membranes. Nuclear is surrounded by two membranes. Chloroplast surrounded by two membranes. Paroxysm surrounded by single bilayer of lipid, single membrane of lipid. So now I am going to talk about how they look like. This is a picture of, this is another a little bit of modified version of the paroxysm structure where we have a lipid bilayer outside, single layer. then. You have enzymes inside and it has a core structure which is kind of crystalline in nature. How exactly they are formed is not very clear but we know they are crystalline uh, core and in the bilayer they have transport protein as well. This is something unique which is generally not found in the lysosome. Lysosome don't have transport proteins in the bilayer but paroxysomes have transport protein in the bilayer. Okay? Now what we intend to talk here is that uh, how they look like? They are round or oval vesicles. Inside there are many many enzymes are present. Each paroxysm has a single membrane. Each cell contains several hundred paroxysomes and they reassemble and they resemble lysosome structure. Their self-replicating size is variable and uh, it is roughly 700 nanometer as I said. The organ that paroxysomes are most abundant in liver liver and kidney, particularly in the liver where the metabolic processes are high, where the detoxication process takes place in the body and liver is the factory where detoxication of our body's toxins will take place. That's why it carries more number of paroxysm. So this is the difference between anatomy of paroxysm and anatomy of lysosome. You can clearly see very, very similar in structure. But as I mentioned one thing that paroxysm also have their transporters outside where the lysosome lacks uh, the transporters. Okay. And that is uh, one thing, both has lipid bilayer uh, and one more thing is that the enzymes that we found is the key difference between lysosome and paroxysm. Paroxysm contains oxidase enzymes, most oxidative enzymes, oxidase are present and it has a crystalline core where lysosomes have hydrolytic enzymes and the mixture of hydrolytic enzymes and there is no crystalline core found in the lysosome. That is a structural difference between lysosome and uh, paroxysm. So paroxysm contain oxidase type of enzymes, lysosome contain hydrolase type of enzymes. That is the key difference. Write it down. Print it in your brain. And one more thing is that the origin of paroxysm and lysosome. Lysosome is originated from Golgi apparatus while paroxysome is originated from endoplasmic reticulum. That is the difference. So if you look at the endomembrane system, we have endoplasmic reticulum. From there we have, we have Golgi from there we have lysosome okay so basically uh, primary primary lysosome primary endosome then secondary endosome like that and lysosome is produced as a maturation if you want to know more about lysosome structure and function we also have a lecture on that you can watch it that is the endomembrane system so basically from here directly paroxysome is produced and from golgi lysosome is produced this is the fundamental difference between lysosome and paroxysome so origin 
not well understood but we know it also it can have endosymbiotic relationship some scientists believe that they come from bacteria which are parasites and some other believed antibacterial origin but it's not clear yet what are the functions of peroxism first beta oxidation of fatty acids beta oxidation of fatty acids can be carried out here okay beta oxidation is also carried out in the mitochondria but this is another place of the beta oxidation of fatty acids glyoxylate cycle takes place inside the peroxism photorespiration now normally we know that uh, in photosynthesis the plant have the rubisco enzyme which can fix oxygen as well as carbon dioxide if it fixes oxygen we call it photorespiration in that case uh, photorespiration uh, to convert the component of photorespiration into something that the plant can utilize and produce energy from uh, paroxysm need to be involved as a compartment degradation of purines take place here decomposition of hydrogen peroxide which is very important detoxication is done here and participates in synthesis of cholesterol participates in the synthesis of bile acids bile acids means obviously needed for the uh, fragmentation of fats during digestion it digests ethanol as well that's why you know last three components participation in synthesis of cholesterol synthesis of bile acids and digesting ethanol that's why they are more predominant in the liver and more predominant in the liver role of peroxidase uh, peroxisomes in the liver breakdown of excess fatty acids very very important when the excess fatty acids present in the liver they are broken down by this peroxism that are present in the liver it also break down hydrogen peroxide h2o2 a potentially dangerous product fatty acid oxidation it is catalyzed by the enzyme catalase very very important step it break down h2o2 okay very very important participates in synthesis of cholesterol synthesis of bile acids synthesis of lipids breakdown of excess purines as well breakdown of excess purines uh, to uric acids so this is the excess purines that are present which can be toxic in the liver they are also broken down into uric acid and they are released from the body role of peroxisomes in plants so basically as i mentioned earlier that in plants if the plant rubisco enzyme fixes oxygen instead of carbon dioxide in that case it loses energy and multiple extra stages needed to fix this and to fix this it needs to have peroxisome as a intermediary compartment in the chloroplast normal process can continue in the mitochondria the other process of generating carbon dioxide continues but peroxisome is needed in the center for example rubisco rubisco fixes oxygen into glycolate once the glycolate is formed in the chloroplast the glycolate cannot directly be converted into co2 and actually the plants require co2 for the fixation of carbon uh, into uh, sugar but here glycolate is produced once gly glycolate intermediate is produced it cannot develop into co2 it cannot generate co2 the only way to generate is that the glycolate is transported into the peroxisome and the glycolate is converted into glyoxylate by oxidation and it produces h2o2 in the peroxisome remember glycolate converted to glyoxylate by this process by product h2o2 hydrogen peroxide is produced which is toxic which is dangerous and this glyoxylate is converted to glycine glycine can be turned uh, inserted back into the mitochondria and the glycine can be converted into serine and the process of conversion of glycine into serine generates co2 that's how plants get co2 that's how the co2 can be utilized by the rubisco to fix okay that's how the whole process can be normalized but to normalize the whole process engagement of peroxisome is very very important very very crucial because there is no other organelle that can convert gly glycolate into and and can generate into the co2 so because by this process h2o2 will produce and if this process is carried out in any other compartment of the cell except for peroxisome the h2o2 hydrogen peroxide that produces will damage the cell right it cannot damage peroxisome because inside peroxisome catalase enzyme is produced and catalase can convert h2o2 into water and oxygen that's the detoxification step that is carried out by the peroxisome so peroxisome actually can detoxify all this toxic h2o2 that is produced by the body here okay so detoxification i already mentioned uses o2 to oxidize organic substance and produce hydrogen peroxide so this hydrogen peroxide can be converted into water and oxygen by catalase and this catalase enzyme is produced by the peroxisome that's a blessing for us okay what else enzymatic pathways are present fatty acid oxidation 
H2O2 detoxification by the catalyst. Bile acid synthesis can be done. Plasmanogen synthesis, cholesterol synthesis, glyxylate detoxification. We just saw with an example. These are all functions of peroxisome. Now, what are the diseases associated with peroxisome? There are total 16 disorders, 15 are autosomal recessive and one is X-linked. Okay? The X-linked one is adrenoleukodystrophy. What is adrenoleukodystrophy? Deficiency in beta oxidation of very long chain fatty acids. That is adrenoleukodystrophy. And there is another very common syndrome, Zellweger syndrome, defect in the protein import giving rise to ghost paroxysm. So, Zellweger syndrome defect in the protein import, okay, that is one thing. And one, the most common, the most abundant disease associated with paroxysm is adrenoleukodystrophy, adrenoleukodystrophy or ALD, most common paroxysmal disorder, 1 in 20,000 cases in USA we are talking about ALD, progressive neurologic disorders that begins at age 5 to 12 years, boys with new onset of school deficiencies and ADHDs, there is a visual special deficiencies and hearing loss, spasticity, ataxia, maybe seizures and hypoglycemia, salt losing and hyperpigmentation. All these symptoms are associated with ALD known as adrenoleukodystrophy or adrenomyeloneuropathy adrenomyeloneuropathy or adrenoleukodystrophy. This is the most predominant kind of disorders associated with paroxysms. So, we have talked about paroxysms structure and function. There is not, mu not mu much things there to discuss about the uh, fun uh, structure of paroxysm, but the functions are really, really crucial. Functions are really, really important and we know what functions they are playing. They are playing some vital crucial functions out there. And their deficiency is related to some sort of defects related to this kind of illness and diseases. So, I believe you understood something new about paroxysms in this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you.